Hi, my name is Mohit Mehta. I'm a senior consultant with AWS Professional Services. Today, I'm going to talk about querying Apache Huri datasets using Amazon Athena. I'll start by explaining what Apache Huri does and how our customers are utilizing it. I will also discuss support for Apache Huri across the ecosystem of AWS services. Finally, I will review the architecture for a data ingestion pipeline I have set up for the purposes of this demo. So let's get started. What is Apache Huri? Huri is an open source data management framework that is used to incrementally process data and for data pipeline development. Huri allows you to efficiently manage business requirements such as data lifecycle management and managing data quality. Our customers uh, use Huri to manage data at the record level in S3 data lakes, uh, and it helps them simplify change data capture. Customers also use Huri for streaming data ingestion and for managing data privacy use cases that require record level updates and deletes. The data sets that are managed by Huri are stored in S3 using open storage formats. Huri is an open source uh, Apache framework, while integrations uh, are, are also offered with Presto, Apache Hive, Spark, and the AWS Glue catalog for near real-time access to, to updated data in, in S3. Let's discuss some common use cases for Huri. A common challenge when creating data pipelines is dealing with change data capture. Late arriving or incorrect data requires the data to be rewritten for updated records. Finding the right files to update, applying the changes, and then viewing the data is challenging and requires customers to create their own frameworks or conventions. With Huri, late arriving data can be upserted into an existing data set. When changes are made, Hoodie will find the appropriate files in S3 and rewrite them to incorporate any inserts, updates, or deletes that have taken place. Hoodie also allows you to view your data set at a specific point in time, so you can have snapshots of, of your data. Each change to the data is tracked and can be easily rolled back should you need to undo them. And finally, AWS offers integration with database migration service which can simplify loading of the data. Let's discuss uh, data deletion use cases in regards to privacy regulations. Due to the recent privacy regulations like GDPR and CCPA, companies across many industries need to perform record level updates and deletions for people's right to be forgotten or changes to consent as to how their data can be stored. Previously, we had to create custom data management and ingestion solutions to track individual changes and rewrite large data sets for just a few changes. With Apache Hoodie, we, we can now use familiar inserts, updates, upsert and delete operations, and Hoodie will track transactions and make granular changes on S3, which simplifies our data pipelines. Let's also talk about streaming data use cases. Now with streaming internet of things and ingestion pipelines, we need to handle data insertion and update events without creating many small files that can cause performance issues for analytics. Those, uh, those in the world of analytics and big data are quite familiar with the small file problems. Data engineers need tools that enable them to use upserts to efficiently handle streaming data ingestion, automate and optimize storage, and enable analysts to query new data immediately. Previously, we had to build custom solutions that monitor for, for querying, and all of this had to be managed, orchestrated, and monitored. Going forward with Hoodie, we can automatically track changes and merge files so that they remain optimally sized. Now, the, the real value for this, uh, this is in the use cases around enterprise data warehouse and operational data stores and where data engineers, 
and data analysts want to use query engines, SQL query engines like Apache Hive and Presto for processing and analytics. With Hoodie, individual changes can be processed much more granularly, reducing the overhead. And we can query S3 data sets directly to view and provide users with a near real-time view over the data. Let me explain the support that Hudi has across the, the spectrum of AWS services. As I mentioned, Hudi provides mechanisms to perform updates, deletes, and inserts on top of S3 Parquet files. In addition to that, Athena, Amazon Athena supports querying the Hudi datasets in, in our Amazon S3 bag data lake directly. We can, we can create tables. Uh, we, we can uh, run queries against existing tables or, or look at uh, queries around snapshots or point in time data. There is no need for dedicated infrastructure. Hudi is just a library and we can include the jar files as part of our data processing workflow. So if, if we're using Amazon Athena to, to query our Hudi data sets, uh, we, we have to, we, we're basically working in a serverless model and there is no uh, infrastructure to provision or manage. Hudi is also supported on Amazon EMR since version 3.1, uh, version 5.31, which allows uh, our users to develop Spark jobs on EMR and process Hudi tables. Uh, Hudi is installed automatically on, on any cluster that when we choose Spark, Hive, or Presto uh, on, on an EMR cluster. So you get native uh, native integration with, uh, with with those services. And then also we have native integration with AWS database migration service to provide a, another source for data as it changes. Finally, Hudi automatically syncs AWS Glute catalog, so the data is immediately available for processing by analytics engines such as AWS Athena, Redshift, Presto, Spark, and Hive. In this demo, I will show you how to replicate data from a relational database. In my case, I've set up a Amazon Aurora database to your S3 bag data lake using Apache Hoodie to manage inserts, updates, and deletes. I will use AWS Glue to upset data in the data lake using Hoodie as an embedded library. And finally, we'll take advantage of the serverless ar architecture of Amazon Athena to query the Hudi data set in our data lake. So let's get started. For this demo, I have set up an Amazon Aurora Postgres database, and I've set up Amazon Database Migration Service tasks, which are looking for change data capture from this, uh, from this database. What I will do is I'll, I'll create a schema. I will then create a table and insert a few rows into that database. So let's let's do that. Once I run these queries, I will. Um, you can see that I have inserted seven rows with uh, with different um, employee details into my database. And what I will also do is uh, after this, I will perform certain updates. So I will update the row that corresponds to employee two and change the city to New Delhi. I will also change the salary for employee number five to 70,000. And then I will uh, I will capture certain, uh, I will insert two new employee records for eight and nine and delete a uh, record corresponding to employee number three. So let's do these changes. So before I, I did this, uh, this is this, uh, the state of my database. You can see I have seven records. And let's uh, let's track one of them. Uh, Susan is listed as, uh, as the city is listed as New York and salary of sixty thousand. Now I'm going to run my update and uh, let's let's go through with that step. So I've updated five rows. Let's uh, let's run the select again. So now I have a total of eight records in my database. Susan, as you can see, her city is updated to New Delhi 
and the salary is 60,000. I also made some changes to employee number five, updated the salary to 70,000, which you can see is reflected here. Joe is employee number five and the salary is 70,000. So the next step would be, I, I would like you to, sh uh, to see how you can query this data in Athena. So let's move over to the Athena console. Okay. After my glue job runs, I have the changes replicated in the data catalog and the Hoodie data set is created. So you can see that I have a database called Human Resources, which contains the employee details table. Let's, uh, let's look at the structure of the table. So as I, as I examine the structure, there are a few columns that are, that are used by Hoodie for, for tracking the commit time, sequence number, record key, partition path, and file name where this record belongs. And then I have my data records for update timestamp, employee number, name, city, salary, schema, and department. This data is partitioned uh, using the department code. So I, I have uh, records that belong to sales department and uh, to IT and purchase, and, and they're all structured in S3 so that our Athena queries are optimized. So I'm going to go ahead and run a select against this data set in Athena. You can see my query came back fairly quickly. You can check the, the, the time. It took 1.5 seconds to scan 2.37 KB of data. And in, in my case, I have eight records total, uh, just as, as I was showing you in my SQL editor. And for, for comparison's sake, we can see that uh, we had uh, updated the record for employee Susan. Uh, the city was set to New Delhi, and that change is reflecting here. And then also we had uh, we had made some changes to the record for Joe. We had upgraded the salary to seventy thousand. So all those changes have uh, have migrated over to our data lake, and and we are able to query it using Athena. Now let's uh, let's look at uh, one other uh, detail here as part of our demo. I want to show you if you want to recreate this table, you have the option of uh, generating your DDL. And in, in this case, when I run the show create table for my employee tables, it, it gives me the, the structure, the data types, and the, the Athena location. So if I want to create uh, this table with, uh, uh, let's say, in a different catalog or in a different database, I could copy this DDL run it and i'm this time i'm going to give it a new name i'm going to give it a uh, name of employee details too now it will create a new a new table uh, in my glue data catalog with this name as you can see the table is now created and i should be able to now run select statements against my new table so let's hit preview table and Athena goes out and, and queries my, my data. So you can see that no, no data is found. And the reason for that is I, I need to add partitions for, for the data that, that I've newly added. So I'm going to do that here. So this is my employee details too. I will, I will first go ahead and add this partition and then I will run the query. Okay, the query is successful. So now let's proceed by running a select. Okay, as you can see that uh, the partition that I added, I'm able to query the data from it. And uh, my, my new table is, is up and running. So uh, that's, that's the, the basic gist of it. You could, you could very easily capture changes from, from your database, bring them into a data lake and you can you can process them in in real, real time and be able to query the data using Amazon Athena. That brings me to an end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.